This is what we built so far. We have the subdomain and it points to an S3 bucket, which is configured as a website. And this website is our front end code for our demo app. And our demo app makes API requests. It calls an AWS API gateway endpoint, which in turn calls a Lambda function that serves these requests. We have an endpoint to list files, to upload a file and to delete a file. But when we call these endpoints, nothing happens. For example, if we upload a file, it doesn't really upload. And if we try to delete files, it seems to work, but it doesn't actually change anything. And that's because in the previous video, we just created these endpoints, but we didn't implement them. So we have get files, delete files, and post files, but they do nothing. And in this video, we will implement these endpoints. We will make our front-end code work. We're going to do it by creating an S3 bucket and then using these buckets. So when we upload a file, we will store it to S3. When we delete a file, it will be deleted using the S3 API. And when we refresh and we want to list the files, we will call the S3 API call to list the files and we'll display them here. This is going to be part four of our series. And in this part, we will implement the API. Our goal will be a working API. First, we'll create a bucket. And second, we will implement the API endpoints. Let's get started by creating the bucket. We have already seen how to do that. We'll go to S3, create bucket. We'll call it app uploader files. We won't block all public access, but we will block public access defined by ACL. And this is going to be the bucket to which we will upload our files from our app. What we're also going to do is set the permissions for this bucket. We want everybody to be able to access them because in our app, we have the functionality to click this button and then see the file that was uploaded. You can see here, it says fake JPEG. So we don't have this file because uh, it's just a dummy endpoint. But after we upload the actual files, we want to be able to click this button and view the file. So we'll define all the files to be public. We'll go to the bucket policy and we'll just copy the value from the documentation. We'll go to read only permissions to an anonymous user paste this in here and we'll change the bucket name to the actual bucket name what we want to do now is implement these three endpoints when we call get we want to get a list of the files on our bucket when we call delete we want to delete a file by its name and when we call post we want to upload the file using the name the content type and the content of the file so let's create three functions that we will use for each of the endpoints First function is get files. In this function, we will make a request to S3 and get a list of files and then return them as an object. And this is also how the response will look like. It will be a single attribute named files that will contain an array with the file names. In case it's a delete request, we will call delete files and we'll pass it the name variable. And the name, we're going to get it from our request. So every time there's a request to our endpoint, to our handler, we're going to take the body of the event, parse it because it will be in JSON. And then the request object will contain all the parameters that we get. We won't really validate it for, because it's a simple example, but We'll just assume that there is a name attribute for that request object. In case it's a post request, we will call the post files function and we'll pass it the name, content type and content. And in here, we will implement these three functions. To implement these functions, we will need the S3 object because we're going to make requests to the S3 API. We also need the bucket name. Let's start by implementing the upload function. We'll go to post files and we'll upload using the s3.upload function. We want to use a promise, so we'll ask the SDK to return a promise. These are going to be the parameters we pass to it. First of all, the key, which is going to be the file name. Then bucket, which is our bucket name content type and body. 
This will call the S3 upload function and pass it the file that we get from the user. Next, we'll implement the delete files function. It will be very similar. Instead of upload, we'll use delete object. And we'll only need the key and the bucket. Next, let's implement the get files function. First, we'll define the files array. It will be an array of objects that have a single attribute name, which will be a string. Then we'll call the list objects v2 function with a single parameter, which is going to be our bucket name. We want to make sure we get back a promise. We will iterate over the items that we have in the contents response. And for every item, we'll take its key. And again, the key is the file name. So we'll take only the key from all these, uh, all these files and push them into our files array and return them. So these are our three endpoints, get files, delete files, and post files. Now let's try to deploy this function and see if it works. We'll deploy by calling yarn deploy. There's one last thing we need to do, and that is to give our Lambda function permissions to access S3. By default, there is a role that is created for the Lambda function, but it doesn't have permissions yet. So we'll go to the IAM service, we'll go to our roles, we'll choose our Lambda role, and we'll attach a policy to it. We'll search for S3, and we'll just give it Amazon S3 full access. Now that we did that, we are ready to try our function. So first, let's try to refresh. And it seems to work. We get an empty list of files. But let's try to upload a few files to see what happens. And the file was uploaded. And now it appears in here. And let's upload a few more. So our endpoint to list files and upload files works. Let's also see these files on our bucket, because what we actually do is upload them to the bucket that we created. And yeah, we see the three files here. Let's try to delete one. The file has been deleted, and it also should disappear from our bucket. Our endpoints work, and we can also access the file using uh, just a URL by clicking uh, this open button. And what we do here is directly access the file on our bucket. And since we made the bucket public, we can uh, just access it this way. This concludes our video for today. We implemented the API endpoints, which we created in the previous video. And now our front end works and our app in general work. We can upload files, delete files, and then get a list of the files that we uploaded. In the next video of this series, we will look at CloudWatch. What we're going to do is create custom metrics for our endpoints. For example, when we delete a file, we'll send the custom metric delete file to CloudWatch. And then we'll also look at how to create a dashboard on CloudWatch to see all these custom metrics that we send with our events.